next judgment. Today we are losing a lot of issues because of the church. When we say there's global warming, they say, hey, it's God's plan. When we say, hey, you have to take vaccines, they say, we will lose salvation. When we say, hey, you have to use condoms, they say, you are killing valuable lives and spirits that God created. We believe, ladies and gentlemen, in a pluralistic society where we have more than one religion other than Christianity, religious tenets must be measured against 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 civil failures <laughs> and legal tenets. In a case where we are talking about an extremely or just serious crimes, and we are talking about going against the law versus a custom that is not even in the Bible. This is no way that the latter can go above the former. In my speech, I'm going to give you a few arguments. But before that, our policy. One, this will only enforce serious crimes where the jury is also involved in. So these are cases where hearsays and their says of different witnesses are important. But second, we will require that there be a certain fair amount of evidence that the criminal or the convict actually went to the church, or the defendant went to the church, to say that there is actually a possibility of that there has a confession that took place. But lastly, we say that confession will be compulsory for the pastor or for the father to actually feel. If he does not, he will be counted as a false witness and subjected to any form of punishment that a country would have. Just in case you don't know, confession means a person, after committing a sin, go to a church, go into a small wooden box and play with the priest. Uh, by play, I mean he will tell the priest secretly what he, what he has done, and the priest will not tell anyone else. It only happens in a Catholic church, we believe it is time to change that. A few arguments. Firstly, in terms of principle, but before that, what are we aiming to achieve? We really believe this is not about helping to catch crime. As a matter of fact, we don't think anyone will be that dumb after this process has passed and just go and say, hey, father, I committed a crime. And wait for the father to go and say, hey, you committed a crime. I believe it. In cases where this does happen, this is actually good. Because in these marginal cases, it helps understand the truth as it really is, which we do not have to depend on other kinds of evidences. But in most other cases, we concede it is not really that helpful. We also concede that there will be a short-term huge backlash in terms of from the Catholic Church. We also concede that in the short term, there will be lots of difficulties that the Church is going to experience. But what we are going to show is that we're going to show that no man is above the law, not even a man that who is pretending to devote himself to a life of abstinence. Now, what are we actually standing for? Firstly, in principle, religion versus the law. You first have to understand Confession is not even a core tenet in the Bible. The Bible never talks about how you have to confess to a priest in not to talk to God. Almost every single person in the New Testament talks directly to God. But second, there is no word at all at any point of the Bible to say that confession has been secret. This is a new invention in the medieval age by the Catholic Church because they have nothing to do and because they want to earn money. This is an invention, I love a lot of other inventions that might also know, such as the redemption ticket, which has long been abolished. We do not believe that there's anything special in terms of theoretical in this case, other than the fact that we agree that this allows you to say it out more easily. But we say in a case where a lot of people talk already pray directly to God, this is already less than necessary. But secondly, we also say in a lot of these cases, we have to compare it and measure it to the significance of the law, where we know that this case is about serious crime, and when the father actively hides it, believe this violates the basic responsibility that you have towards the victim, towards the court, towards the government, you as a citizen. We do not believe that father is not a citizen as well. But now, and this is where we believe, compare the importance of the religion and compare the importance of the law, this is where the law must take precedence. But secondly, what are we also standing for? I believe this is going to change the church and our society, and change society in a better, more secular society. Why is that the case? Because from right now, the church, every single day, will be reminded that confessions are subjected to court reviews. Every time there's a criminal case, somehow if the criminal walks past the church, the father is summoned, and he will have to crash the Bible and ask, did he confess to you? And you have to say yes, and say no. Either way, he will believe in the father. And what that says when that happens is that people consi consistently see the father subjected to the law, see the church subjected to the law. But thirdly, it also it is especially important when there are occasional court cases when the priest is being summoned and the priest actually tells the story of a criminal. These are cases that will have impact on two levels. Firstly, on the level of the believer. For the believer, the problem for lots of believers is that they think that they're only accountable to God. That is bullshit. What we're doing here is that we're telling these believers that the core
core of your behavior, the scene of your behavior, is not only accountable to God, but where it also is a crime to society, it is equally accountable to society. And when a believer constantly has one of his most beloved customs being subject to the law, this is where we have the sense that he has to account, be accountable to society as well. But secondly, we also say, but yeah, go. You contend priests as citizens. So my question is, are there occasions where citizens are exempted from legal requirements to report a serious crime? Yes. We gave you cases such as where their bodily life or whatnot are being endangered. But this is not a case, so compared to you, that this is not even an important custom. But for the father as well, where he has to actively and constantly report to the court, this is when you inject a sense of accountability to society. And that is important because that sense of accountability is going to flow through when it gives sermons, when it talks to its believers, when it communicates with these believers, with these institutional changes what you're going to get. The conclusion that you're going to reform the identity, that they will start to have a more importance of a civil identity over the religious identity. We've already seen this case in a lot of European countries, such as that of Germany, such as that of France. That is a good thing, compared to the stupid idiots in America, where they simply interpret everything that they have. What does that mean? Three things. One, it means more tolerant for other minorities. Two, it also means that they are less intrusive in terms of discussing public policy and bringing all the stupid religious arguments. But lastly, it also means that when they are more transparent to the public, you can better hold the church in account. Lastly, what we are also doing is we are telling the minorities that Christians are not being privileged, Catholics are not being privileged, that they also have to succumb to law. So when we next have to discuss and negotiate with these minorities and tell them that they also have to follow the law, we have a much easier time. In the end, what is open government trying to achieve today? What we are trying to achieve in the short term is at least to have a few more cases. But in the long term, more importantly, what we are trying to do is to change the church, to change the believers, to change the fathers, and tell them that the society and your social identity is more important than religious identity. And this is where it matters, because there are lots of policies right now are being contested under extremely ridiculous religious reasons. This is how we weed them out. This is how we reform the identity. This is why we are very proud of you folks. Thank you very much. Thank you for his remark. Now I'd like to call upon Mai to open their case within seven minutes. Here, here. of effective 
certain voluntary confessions to be used at the status quo. So I'm going to give you three arguments in this debate. Firstly, why this policy will actually lead to lesser prosecution of crimes. Secondly, why confession boxes are instrumental to self-rehabilitation for these criminals. And thirdly, why the state has a mandate to balance their duty within the boundaries of human rights. Actually, I don't know if I'll make it in time for the third one. Maybe uh, Chikara will talk about it. Let's just wait and see what happens, right? Before that, a few rebuttals. Firstly, so I opened the government said they didn't want to do this policy in order to increase state prosecution because they know my first argument is to tell them why that will not be effective at all. If that's fair, because without that, then your policy has zero tangible positive trade-off. So you wanted to do it just because you hate religion, what a way to be a secular state, guys, who doesn't respect at all the freedom to practice religion. But B, every single argument that you have within your policy is indicating that you do want to increase state practice prosecution, and that is your end goal, which is why my first argument will still be relevant in telling you why why that outcome will not be materialized. Secondly, the only justification they had coming from side opening government is that religion must be subject to law. I have two levels of responses. Number one, this was never a unique exemption only given to religion. Every single citizen under the school right now can avail themselves of the right to not voluntarily offer information. So if my sister decides to confess to me that she's a criminal, I am not obligated to go to the police station the next day, nor am I compelled to offer that information to any state enforcement models. So under uh, under that logic, there is no unique exemption to religion. This is merely the right to privacy as it operationalizes itself. If you don't want to grant exemption to this religion, that means you also are for the right of abrogating every single right of private conversation because state enforcement has to be effective. But secondly, take the seat. They say that religion must be subject to law. We think that religion is subject to law in the status quo. The only way to say religion is not subject to law is if these priests are actively being caught and we deliberately not prosecute him. That is an exemption to religion in particular, which is clearly not the case. How so? We do agree with Samuel that religion has not been particularly benevolent and they've done a lot of harms in the status quo. But have we afforded them exemption? No. The state, the media, and the society has been particularly unforgiving of religious breaches when they contravene with human rights. We have placed extreme scrutiny on their behavior and we force them to be accountable when they tell people that abstinence is the only way out and you must wear condoms and in that Oh! 
in this conversation, and you have a less of a meaningful tool to induce voluntary criminal confessions and this to school. Lastly, when confession boxes are instrumental to solve behind the digit so we have the children within of criminals. Under both models, let's concede these criminals are not likely to be prosecuted anyways. Therefore, it's better to have a safety net for rehabilitation for those who are not prosecuted under state of Firstly, the self-allocation of guilt is the first step for these criminals to take responsibility for their own actions. And secondly, having a religious community that is willing to reintegrate you back with open arms gives them a valuable support system that enables these individuals to regain a sense of self-worth and then become productive members of society who will fully rehabilitate themselves. Under your model, the people who are not prosecuted will remain to be not prosecuted and they won't have any rehabilitative avenue. We're very proud to oppose. Thank you for her remark. Now I'd like to call upon DPG Prime Minister to continue the case within seven minutes. Here, here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mai told us that it is a very sensitive private information and the charge should keep it. But it's not just about the private information, it's a criminal information which harms the victims, which creates victims, and also some minorities or victims are actually harmed by it. This information is very crucial and fairly prosecute and have fair justice. And also we believe law is the most accountable system for every person. We believe the church is not only accountable for their own, pre our own believers. We believe the criminal believers should be undermined under the law. And we believe no man should, can be above the law. We believe that uh, as a law model, also a law model in a society as a, uh, as a priest, we believe we want them to, to, uh, to, for, uh, to be under the law and confess everything for, uh, for the priest and for the society. That is the stance from the opening government. So, for my speech, I will directly engage with the my case, and, and, and that, that is the things that I have to be told by Samuel. <laughs> okay. So, first point, they pointed out the, the, the religion cannot be, the law uh, cannot, uh, cannot override the religion. They pointed out the Oh, they pointed out that actually the priest actually is special and previous, and also the ordinary citizen that is also put information by the closing opposition. But they pointed out that even the citizens do not have obligation to involuntarily confess their things, even if they are requested by the priest. No, thank you. But we believe that actually, if you consider it, the role of priests, we believe they are special existence in the society. They actually have a higher position in the church. We believe the priests have a lot of influence over the other believers. If those priests do something, the believers think that it is just things that have, they can follow. So if the father do not confess, do not follow what the authority requires, we believe that the believers also think that the criminal justice system can be undervalued maybe because they, they point out uh, that because the priests do not do so. We believe that father, as, uh, uh, the fathers in the church, uh, as, as, as a role model or, uh, or, or the higher position in charge, we believe that they should show the stance that they are also accountable for the society, also accountable for minority by following the, uh, the uh, universal consensus laws or more, uh, moral values that they are actually imposed by the society. Because the moral values that, that are considered or agreed with every party in the society can be the best value that we have to follow in the society. 
And so we and, and they pointed out, and, and Mike pointed out that criticism, uh, no, no, on, on me, sorry. Uh, he, she pointed out that uh, actually the confession uh, cannot be an uh, active message, but we believe the confession can be a high active message because believers are told, uh, uh, or the these criminal believers are told that they do not confess to others, they do not follow the order of society. We believe it is a crucial active message to show the belief, uh, show people do not have to necessarily follow the value in society. Yes, ma'am. In a world where no one can keep private information to themselves, because according to you, no one is above the law, how do you plan to enforce it? Do you want to record all private conversations? We believe this private conversation is highly related to the criminal cases, like there is, there is a clear request by the court. We believe that private information can be submitted to the court. But the lines here, we believe the authority has no May, maybe have no right to arbitrarily decide and arbitrarily, uh, without, inf without consent or information, request the report, uh, or no, and see all the private or sensitive information. That is a clear right. We are talking about criminal information, obvious criminal cases. So, uh, I'm sorry, uh, okay. So, moreover, he, she pointed out that, we, that, that believers may not that uh, co confess in the first place. They do not use the religious means if they, uh, if they are requested. So no prosecutions can be happened under a pardon. But we believe that in the first place, we believe that confessions can be made. We believe that confessions are not telling information to the priest. They are telling information to the God or telling information to for themselves. We believe that they are actually telling so because the God binds you. We believe in the character, the uniqueness in religion is that God sees you, God, God always sees you. We believe that they cannot actually tell a lie in every time because the God binds you. That is the ca uh, character of religion. In that case, we think they cannot actually tell a lie to the priest. They cannot hide information to the priest because the priest actually directly connected with what God says. Therefore, we believe the confession can also be made and that's a mechanism. We believe they pointed out the voluntary system can be still allowed. But actually they are so, uh, also saying that fair bargaining can be increased and that is a good policy. We believe it may harm their, their mechanism. We believe if the fair bargaining is allowed and if there is a risk that fair bargaining can be used by priests as well, we believe that believers cannot still trust the, uh, trust the priests because priests do not have to guarantee, guarantee you or guarantee believers, they do never tell the priest. Therefore, in their model, we believe they actually have. Therefore, there was no exclusive state in the problem, the no telling thing. And so, they were also pointed out about rehabilitation and self-reflection. And we believe that it's better, you know, thank you, if the believer, if believers actually make atonement under the priest. And then it's better than not telling you. Are not telling to the priest. Well, we believe that self reflection can also be done in prison. We believe it's not an exclusive point. We believe that if they go to prison and after being prosecuted by the court, we believe that the priest or, or the Christian or, or, or Christian community or Christian priest can still access to the prison and say something and make some confession. We believe that they are, can actually make atonement under this. We don't think we, we have, they have to do before or not but by not telling to the priest. We believe what we are telling is that the, the laws are uh, that should be considered by every party in society can be at universal and can be more important. We believe that we are talking about child abuse and charge, like not using and uh, uh, actually kill, uh, harming women in charge. We read these cases cannot be just an important private information, but actually harming the victims. We read these things must be punished fairly under the court, under the law, because it, it, both parties victimized in society can be fairly accountable and their rights can be adjusted. We think we believe in a criminal justice system and it must be universal in a secular or liberal context. And that's what we, we are talk, talking about from the opening government. Thank you. Thank you for his remark. Now I'd like to call upon Deputy Leader of Opposition to continue the case within seven minutes here. here. Thank
Are we talking about the balance, what Umay had left in her speech, about the balance of the state's sacred responsibility for security and religion? That we say that religion is a fundamental tool for people to associate to their, to what they fundamentally believe in, and something often more important for some privacy that they did support for these specific individuals. Then I'm going to talk about how this further damages the function of religion by inhibiting people from anyone from confessing, because that information is listened by another person when the particular information is something that other you do not want to disclose, other than the sacred person who, you, who is the only person for you to seek forgiveness or seek salvation. Before that, couple independent rebuttal. First, they, their main argument was just simply about this sort of changing religious standards so that they can conform to the natural society or something like that, that they will be tolerant to minorities and also that to say that they will be more com compromising self-criminal investigations, things like that. Firstly, once again, we told you there are clear, clearly numerous alternatives to do that. We never heard why the religion had to be sacrificed, which I'd like to tell you that religious rights are really so, important and that it should not be the first thing to be prioritized, to be sacrificed. But we also, but mine was clear in the menu of numerous alternatives which they never engaged why they, this policy was, new, was specifically necessary to tackle specific forms of heinous crimes or some high context religion that we never heard of. But we further say looking at this changing moral standards religion, we once say that so there are numerous alternatives to pressure religion to voluntarily change its standards. That's why in the contemporary moral society, the church is also willing to compromise its understanding of sexual minorities and change its value after all. My clearly also told you that society is willing to sanction its religion to the extent that it had numerous human, to have heinous human rights violations and the religion would have to change itself after all. So you never heard the exclusivity about what they cannot sacrifice change in, in this debate because maybe something uh, marginal might be, be able to change that in this debate but that, that was something never substantiated on this side, on this side of house. So thank you. Further, they have this nuance that that many of the arguments is contingent on the fact that they have law over people. What they did not clarify and did not say in this debate, or rather said was that they would only make these people like give the information only about serious crimes. Then what about light crimes? Uh, is it that people are not uh, can be above the law and stomp, stomp the law if the crime and issue is just looting? or just sort of hitting another person, things like that. I'm not sure whether this, this, the absoluteness of law is existent, because the message that this policy would send would be a contradictory double standard that would say that people cannot comprehend how it should be so. Then we say that there will be more rather deliberate and arbitrary interpretation that's room, that's room for these religious individuals who they might think are arbitrary, and we say that would rather be counterproductive after all. And that's why we thought that this change was not really important. Then, they talk about like prisons are effective to rehabilitate people and that's something necessary. No, thank you. Without engaging with her, my, my argument about, particularly about pious individuals who are relevant to confession, the institute of the church and the system of confession is more effective to rehabilitate these particular individuals. So they think that they associate themselves with religion so important that they would go to confession. Confession, and that's only after the relevant debate. The system of confession is about revealing yourself and like compromising or surrendering yourself as if in front of the God. That would include surrendering you to be op open to op opening yourself and surrendering you to and be seeking forgiveness to victims, things so, like that. In the current society, seeking forgiveness and all those sort of things commonly is to forgive yourself, to co forgive. Seek forgiveness in the justice system because that's something seen natural. Then we say it's common for these people to sac sacrifice themselves or go in front of the court voluntarily through the system of confession. And that's why we never thought that prison was more important at all. And even if it's more important, I don't know. It's not, not something that should be prioritized because the confession of the system itself would equivalently deal with so, that. Yes. We never had a problem with confession per se. The reason why confession is secret, even in criminal cases, is problematic. It's because this is an active message telling the entire community that you are only accountable to God, but not to society and not to God. One, deal with your double standard about only being a serious crime. But more importantly, God also recommends that you follow correct moral values at the whole. That, so, no God would say that you should rape or you should kill, things like that. Generally, the Lord the moral standard that God recommends you to follow is something that applies to current society after all. And even if that's not the case, that like it's not that liberal democracies that have a general religion have crazy societies after all. People can follow moral the current law and also religion after all. Their characterization that they can follow is a really crazy analysis that I'm not sure whether they exist or it's a minute characteristic that would not be a justification to override the general importance of confession that's relevant to every Christian individual. So, to my substantive. 
So, no thank you. We say that confession is a key system and of, to the existence of Christianity. We say that when the state has a responsibility to ensure religious freedom and the interests of individuals to pursue their satisfaction and freedom, when the state compromises that key factor of religion, the state is irresponsible and destroying that fabric of it. So why is it key to the existence? No, thank you. We say that Christianity is quote, special as a particular religion that seeks redemption and forgiveness. We say that, that somehow seen from how, no, no, no thank you, Jesus spread the religion through the redemption that it done to the citizens, to the, the global society. Two, we also say that confession is necessary procedure for, for that forgiveness after all, happened after all. Because it requires a witness from a sacred being, which is the priest, priest actually sees the procedure of him surrendering themselves to God and seeking for forgiveness or any form of punishment that is waiting for him after all. It needs actual approval by something, someone representing the God. That's why the system of confession, you going in front of the priest and opening up yourself, every single so, what you did in the past must be required after all. That's what, and further, we say, so that's, further, we, they tell us that it's not written in the Bible or something like that. But you know, the Bible has the new, numerous interpretations and understanding of it to best reflect what is written in the Bible after all. Then we say the fact that it's not written in the Bible, rather the fact that the current form of secrecy and confession is seen most important in the current scheme would rather be an essential reason for that to be really important to say. Further, when I went to my second step stand is that people have that huge disincentive to disclose themselves if someone was, it was, it sort of some might be listening to my traumatic experience other than the priest with a huge disincentive and damage the function of confession, then we say that the, the system of confession is compromised. When that is, we have proven to you that it's the core of Christianity after all, other marginal things that they only talk about truth, I mean, adding one evidence to that sort of closer sort of truth is a marginal issue to the extent that they never talked about the importance of serious crime, things like that. When the religious con confession is a fundamental core of Christianity, which is a common religion in our society, and many people have at stake, that is something more important in our society, is looking at how people see it as the importance of it. And that's why it should have gone. Thank you, Professor Mark. So now I'd like to call upon a member of government to open the closing half of the debate within seven minutes. Here, here. Two housekeeping issues. First of all, all of those alternatives are non mutually exclusive, we're happy to adopt yeah. all of them. I don't understand why they spend so much time. We think our policies are mutually complementary and should work hand in hand. Secondly, on these issues of a double standard, they ask, like, why do we force priests to report minor crimes? First of all, we say most crimes are serious, we take them very seriously. And secondly, <laughs> if you're gonna expect a, a, a priest to report to the police that someone stole a chocolate bar, I think the police wouldn't really care because they have better things to do. So I hardly think that's imperative with this within this debate. But before I move on, I also need to say that OG comes forth in this debate because they were fundamentally unresponsive to my excellent responses that priests, that, that, uh, that, that, to, 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 to answer why priests are so unique and to tell them that in the status quo actually, priests are not beyond the law. My response is, yes, currently they are not. That's what needs to change. So we will change the law. Yeah. Let's first talk about the state versus religion, right? Like we all understand that we agree with what we all said, that the state should allow religious institutions free reign over many activities because it recognizes that religious institutions provide a unique public good that the state cannot possibly substitute. But that's also what precisely makes them different from private individuals because they are a public institution that's supposed to serve public interest as defined by the state. And besides, even for private individuals, we also can sometimes subpoena them to reveal things in court. So I don't see why we can't do the same with priests, right? So like, yes, the state allows relig uh, religions and followers leeway to follow certain ways of life because the state recognizes it should not dictate which forms of we, uh, which forms of lifestyles are legitimate. But when there's a clear harm, when there's obstruction of justice, and we, when it hurts the state's ability to take action to protect society, we think there's a clear imperative for state to intervene. And as all themselves admit, the state always intervene, not to destroy the entire religion, but to target specific tenets of the religion that don't serve public interest, such as imposing blood transfusion on children or Jehovah's Witnesses, such as arresting radical Islam, uh, imams who spread extremist ideology, such as like accusing someone who 
does not report knowledge of terrorist plan or activities as being liable to charges of collusion with terrorism or being an enemy of the state. We don't understand why what we are suggesting is such a gross violation of rights or without precedence. Oh, all themselves admitted that the church, that the state can force the church to change its interpretation of gay marriage. We think if the state can change <coughs> such an important interpretation, I fail to see why something such as secrecy of the priest is so much more important. Let's move on to talk, talk, talk about our substance. Because we're going to be first thing to explain to you why the policy works. Because Samuel Chan fell into this trap of saying that hey, nothing's really going to happen. It's all symbolic because I dropped him that hint, right? So this is how things are going to work. I'm going to explain to you long-run socialization. We need to understand that citizens are naturally perceive themselves as responsible law-abiding citizens. They take cues from the law, and laws over the long run create norms with influence, which influence mindsets and behaviour. The famous example of this is when Singapore government banned chewing gum in Singapore. Initially, people were extremely upset because they couldn't understand why. Today, if you speak to a random Singaporean in the street, they will tell you that chewing gum is bad because it leads to destruction of public property and it's a real nuisance when you step on it. What has happened? What has happened is that laws have created a difference in norms in mindsets change. We think the same thing will happen within our policy. When priests are now taught from a very young age, right at the start of the training that when they enter a confession box they are liable to having to report whatever they hear to the police if there's a serious crime happening so currently yes confidentiality is considered sacred but over time we can change this norm we can change the church doctrine we think over time more of these priests will start to comply that's where we get effectiveness yes ma'am what the priests are doing is not unique to their position as priests, but it's applicable to the operations of all other private congregations. And yet, you don't want to compel all citizens to surrender. No, 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 I told you the priest is an employee of a public institution that needs to that needs to serve public interest. That makes the priest different from any other private individual, right? So why will our policy then be effective? Because if the criminal confesses, and we say clearly, even if he knows that the priest might report it, he might still confess because if religious salvation is so important to him, he just might take that risk anyway, right? And the priest report it. Now, now let's, let's face it, right? A priest reporting something he heard isn't really solid evidence. It's just hearsay. But there are few unique benefits on our side. First of all, a crime that the state might not even have known existed might now be reported, which means investigations can start. Secondly, this means the state can pinpoint suspects and link them to certain crimes in situations where they lack information regards to who the suspects may be. This means that they can, they can launch investigations which can lead to justice being served or they may be able to monitor the suspect so that they can prevent future crime and protect citizens. Because chances are if the individual had already committed a crime, he is a much greater danger to society than the than the, than, than the normal individual, right? So, what the priest in fact does, provide vital information to the state about things like the crime scene, the weapon, where the body was hidden, which may be particularly important in enforcing justice. But what if the criminal doesn't confess for fear of being reported? We say that's great because that means he can't gain psychological relief and religious salvation. Like, let's face it, right? We're not violating his religious right to confess. He can confess, but he has no divine right that the priest doesn't tell anyone else, right? Nothing guarantees that under the law. So, like, in the worst case scenario, he becomes insecure and paranoid. He's trapped between a fear of the law and a fear of God. Like, yeah. if the state can't impose punishment on him, the least we can do is make his life a living hell, make him miserable. Watch any detective story or any episode of Conan, right? When the criminal becomes paranoid and insecure, that's when they start making mistakes and that's when it's easier <laughs> to bring them to justice. But like what if the priest doesn't report? We say even the priest doesn't, doesn't end up reporting, right? The criminal still faced with constant fear that he may be monitored because of what he has said, which will lead, which may deter him from committing, committing another crime. But what do unique benefits come out of all? They say two things. I have one thing really. They say um, in the status quo, priests induce confessions to the state and like under our policy this no longer happens. We think like this is just a very strange idea. We think it's highly unlikely that the priest will do that. If the priest did that, criminals probably wouldn't have gone to confession in the first place. Like, surely they didn't go to confess in secret to the priest just so that the priest can tell him to deliver himself to the state. But more importantly, we think the comfort of religious belief that comes from confessing makes him, we argue, much less likely to hand himself over to the authorities because he now feels less guilty because now he has psychological comfort knowing that he has gone to confession and he might achieve religious salvation. That's why we think it's equal likely, equally likely this called hurt rehabilitation. It's equally likely that all that this confession does is to help the criminal feel better about himself. We propose. propose.
Thank you for his remark. Now I'd like to call upon member of opposition to open their case within seven minutes. Here, here. have touched many things and it relates to the debate and they have touched and I think was good. My extension is going to be about consolidating two key elements as opening uh, opposition bench. Firstly, I'm going to consolidate the debate and the argument that privacy should be kept when talking about confession because kept in privacy also means respect of the law in which said government wants to respect in the debate. Secondly, I'm going to talk about no one is forced to report or serious crime when there's an evident threat towards the reporter. Thank and Mike have touched this argument, but he or she did not consolidate it yet. My extension would consolidate and why it didn't very much is because they think that priests are also citizens and priests is also a uh, priest is also citizens because and with that conception of priest, we think this harm really concretely stand. But for that, three points for response. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe for it. First, to opening government. So they contend, you know, priests are the citizens and the answer to my point you mentioned to say, you know, are there occasions where citizens are exempted from legal reform to report a serious crime? Samuel says yes, and the reason why he yes and, ex and make an exception to this debate is, you know, um, confession is not an important custom, those sort of things. I would prove that custom and confession is an important custom, as Chikara told you, and also I would justify my extent, uh, so, reason from a different angle in which confession is also legally important and provide, provide state protection by uh, the law. And answering to my point mentioned by DPM was contradictory as, um, to Samuel. So DPM said, you know, um, priest is our citizen, but he or she is a higher special being within the citizen's category. I think it is antithetical to the basic understanding of citizens because we think citizens have to have an equal treatment as well as the perception of citizens as equal being and we think the, is, their response is contradictory what citizens really meant to have, should be comprehended in our society. And also, they want to change the social norms, those sort of things. But forced change do not have a positive impact to have, uh, to, re to have a respect of that particular norm in which, uh, which is imposed. So somewhere when Tom wants to impose a norm in which all people have to respect law. But if that norm is imposed to the religious person, there's no concept of respect from the perspective of religious person so to the particular norm. So that those called of imposed, yeah, imposed norm is no longer sustainable, Mr. Um, ladies and gentlemen. And so that there's a long-term sustainability of that particular change norm is the, um, devastating the weekend. So also in terms of response towards or closing proposition. So Alfred had extended the debate and had changing the perception of you know the debate by saying you know religious as an institution have to serve to the public good. The problem with this is that this the debate has to specify and target the church, um, priest, not necessarily the church. And we think it is exceedingly important because this target what is policy target specify the individual, not necessarily an institution in and of it itself. And also, they, Alfred also said, you know, it is okay to change the norm because in the long run, people would be accustomed to the law in, by having an analogy of Singapore. But there's a problem, ladies and gentlemen. So for Singapore, chewing gum is, I think, is not a fundamental tenet of their identity. Shame. But change <laughs> really, okay, But in speaking of religion, because it is a fundamental tenet of their identity, as, it, as I implied and explicitly in Samuel, that you know, religious from the perspective of religious person, 
they would have an angry, an anger to the newly imposed norm, and so that in the same way, the Samuel have, have failed to sustain his norm, so, so. you also fail to sustain the norm, not yet. So, extension, why privacy should be kept when especially talking about confession? So, we're especially talking about clergy penitent um, relationship, the conversation, privilege, and privacy should be privileged because absolute privacy uh, is important for genuine regret of the crime. So, the, the clergy privilege is rooted in imperative yeah, yeah, need yeah, to confidence and trust. The privilege recognizes the human need to disclose the spiritual counselor in order and the absolute confidence what they believe and to be flowed acts or through and to receive the consolation and genuine in return. A, a priest has a duty to have a um, confidence in any information obtained during the counseling session. The reason is uh, the significance are as follows. Firstly, as open opposition has touched, you know, in the long run, if, if you know, um, the information is disclosed, there is no like, positive like, incentive for the ex -crim um, criminals to have a confession. But furthermore, more importantly, in which open opposition is any party never talk about is how to achieve a genuine confession and genuine regret of the crime. Genuine regret of the crime is also is, is like only achieved when the only the absolute privacy is kept and also and, and, we, and we think the confession is most effective in the private sphere and your policy would, um, re, uh, the, would reject that particular uh, absolutely private sphere. Yes, sir. Privacy is very important if it is leaked without consent. If we take this policy, we can put some portion the important it is that maybe you will be important police or you know prosecutors. What's the problem? Um, confession is a custom where priests have agreed and have guaranteed to the believers that I will not tell that your secret about your regret. <laughs> Thank you. So if you want to change in the mindset or the core part of the confession, you're, you're not talking about confession itself you can talk about, you know, in this debate. You're talking about distorted in the interpretation of confession, and we think that's immensely damaging. And also, some legal studies have shown that priests who violence with distrust on privacy might only be on loose in end of the suit for an invasion of privacy of defamation. This shows, Samuel, that the regret or the neglect of, or the neglect of keeping privacy is also antithetical to the concept of law. And we, so for those reasons, your policy is damaging as well. Second point of extension. No one is forced to report all serious crime when there's an evident threat towards the reporter. For example, revenge in a psychological as well as physical manner. For example, in analogy, resident lives near a district where Yakuza is dominating such district. No, so those um, districts, um, the residents do not have a legal requirement even if that resident have a possibility to witness a crime. Reason is because the fear of revenge or offense is evident. How about the situation of peace in this occasion? So take note, in a status quo, Priests can, can and do not necessarily in the status quo if and only if, according to their calculus, it is good for them to report a crime. But even in a situation where, so, but even in a situation where priests do not want to report a crime, there is a massive backlash yeah. criticism. So the status quo legally requires priests to ha have a prior priority of secular interest or betrayal of God. Those kind of criticism is exceedingly damaging to their security as well as the social fame of the priest. And we think it's a legitimate form of self-defense for the priest from the perspective of priests. What we have shown you is because it's this the status quo is consistent to the concept of law, and we think this policy breached the fundamental necessity of conversion, and that's what we are Thank you for his remark. Now I'd like to call upon government whip to continue the case within seven minutes. Here, here. Good afternoon, panel. Good afternoon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is so sad that my best friend Shingo neglected lots of the very important analyses from Alfred and just engaging with opening government, which is already fourth. We don't think it is important for them to, you know, just engage with them. We have to engage with our important principle, especially while we impose this specific and special obligation on priests. 
my partner did an awesome job understanding how it's different from other private entities and why, in this specific case, police have an obligation to report it. Our question in this debate is firstly, why should we impose this specific obligation on police? The secondly, which can deter the serious crimes? And maybe the main case is that it is just protecting the privacy and religions, it is important. We don't think that is you know, that important as we already told you that the religion can change. We, don't, we didn't hear any specific importance in protecting this way of confession. And they also have a burden proof to say why on the side of the house the amount of crimes would be decreased. On the side of the house, we successfully proved to you maybe it will not change, but it would be better and it would change. It would be decreased on the side of the house, which is lacking opening government. No, thank you. But before moving to my clashes, please have, uh, let me refer to closing opposition's case. So, firstly, they talked about um, why only priests? Why don't you force churches to do it? Firstly, church is composed of priests. We don't think there's a difference in the first place. Um, secondly, because we think priests are the only person who go to confession, so we can just impose them that obligation. No important points from the side of the house. Then they told us that this is an important point, especially tenant identity and privacy should be protected. But again, who cares? We can change it, we can change it gradually, even though there could be some backlash after time passed, as Alfred mentioned in the case of chewing gum, which is very important for his own identity. We think both kind of things can change in the long run. No, thank you. They haven't proven why, even though there's some public interest that we have to protect, we can prioritize religious interests forever. We don't think that is a good principle on the side of the house. Then they mention privacy, especially matters in rehabilitations. So you have to prove why protecting privacy always benefits rehabilitation. Who can tell she will be rehabilitated because of the existence of God? I think, or more, maybe it is true that religious priests will not say bad thing about you. Even though you committed crime once, or even though you committed crime for the second time, you won't say bad thing. Because once you said a bad thing, it is quite probable that that criminal will not come to that church anymore. So that you can bind him to your own church, so that you can bind him to your own religion. The, um, you know, the possibility of that priest to pardon that criminal will be highly, highly likely. We, no, thank you. We don't think that would work as effective tyrant's power, or it would work as the effective rehabilitation mechanism. This is how we think it's counterproductive in the first place. But second, as I pointed out, if you really care about privacy, we are happy to put a caution in front of the church if you confess you report to the police, because it is an informed choice. We don't think that is important in this debate. Finally, they mentioned about eminent, eminent, if there is an eminent threat, they have to be exempted from this kind of actions, like the case of uh, gangsters in Japan. So, first of all, it will not be a reason for us not to make a general framework so that we can protect certain public interests. No, thank you. If you really think it's important, we can put exemptions sometimes on the priest, especially when there's eminent threat, or they haven't proven why it is always the case. And secondly, even if it is very important, we are happy to protect the priest if such eminent threat exists. So, no contentious matter on the closing of position. So let's move to our debate. First of all, no, thank you. Why should we impose this obligation on the priest? What happens out of the house? This is double standard, especially privacy matters, and let's talk about something unique. Um, we're happy to talk about it. We told you mainly two things. Firstly, um, in my rebuttal especially, forgiveness really matters in this context. Salvation, which means if you betray that, you can go to the hell. But once your God said, once your priest said, you can be exempted from sense of duty by confession, you will not feel any more guilty at all in your rest of life. Which means it is highly probable that you will commit second crime. Maybe we can't say it is, you know, 100%, but we can't say that it is, as they mentioned, just, you know, rehabilitation really happens. We think, on the contrary, it just decreases their sense of guilty, which is counterproductive, harms the public interest. But secondly, more importantly, we told you, as this is a public entity, and priests are employed by the public entity, we have to, um, especially protecting the sense of mental security for the um, religious believers. In that case, we can force them or we can require them to be accountable to the public interest, just as cases, same case as lawyers who have to report on some severe cases. We don't think there's such an you know, important reason for their side of the house to protect you know, privacy in this debate. Before we move to the second point, yeah. We agree with your state goals to reduce crime, but we give your reasons why prosecution is less likely to happen and the state can avail themselves 
themselves a viable alternative to status quo. So where is the imperative to buy established rights when alternatives exist? I want to share the reasons why, on the other side of the house, prosecution still happens. Because co confession happens, no one reports on it, Putin prosecute that person or that criminal. Uh, we didn't get any logic on their side of the house. On the contrary, we can have certain possibility that those people confess to the police. Maybe they're so pious, maybe they're so religious, they would confess and they get some salvation from the God, at least. But there's still possibility that those police report to the police, which could increase the rate of prosecution on the side of the house, which would not happen exclusively on your side of the house. Second question, which can deter the crimes? We have an open opposition. People will not confess, and the rehabilitation system will be damaged. Again, who can tell that those people can be rehabilitated throughout this confession? We don't think they prove well what has happened. I don't think that is the case on their side of the house. So, what we told you, we told you firstly, norms will be created throughout this policy. Especially, even though there's some backlash in the short term, people are getting to be accustomed to the concept that confession is not absolute. Sometimes it has to be, you know, um, succumb to the benefit of the public. We have to say that, you know, normalization that happened, especially through outer training of priests, which is mentioned by Alfred, no engagement from the side of the house. Secondly, we told you it could be a starting point for investigation, which is highly impossible on their side of the house, because they have no information regarding these criminals, which will be in this existing on our side of the house. But finally, we told you we can put a heavy burden on the criminal, especially we can put them in a situation of paranoia, because you have to suffer from you know sense of guilty that you betrayed God. And you also have to fear or suffer from the sense that you will be prosecuted by certain individuals. And once, even though you can report to that, you can increase the possibility of that report and prosecution by the police or prosecutors. We think, on the contrary, or on that side of the house, no information, no benefits. That's why we stand aside the proposition. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rubach. Now I'd like to call upon opposition whip speaker to sum up this debate within seven minutes. Here, here. We can force people to report the crime. Secondly, let's look at which side can decrease the number of um, prosecution. And third way, I'm going to examine the consent and the caution, which was the response coming from Tosca. So moving to the first point, when we can force people to report the crime. Unfortunately, the, from so far, the, my, only my personal experience when we can force these kinds of things. We say that within the legal framework, that we cannot that force people to sacrifice yourself. In terms of self-defense, we cannot do so. That's why in the status quo, so we, do, we are enforced to report some kind of crime. Response coming from the closing government was that we have to report terrorists. But is that true? No one will be, will be punished by actually the, finding this terrorist activity first and foremost. More importantly, no one knows who is terrorist. It's obvious. Probably the police will arrest them. No thinking. Under that circumstance, this terrorist analogy does not applicable in this point. Mr. Speaker, uh, ladies and gentlemen, no thank you. The state has the monopoly of power because in the state has, has right to prosecute the people. Reason why the state has the dominance of this violence is the state can be uh, can be a proxy of the people to prosecute someone. Why state has this kind of right? In order to prevent revenge the, from this offender, the state has the right to the prosecute this kind of person. No thank you. That's why in the status quo, obviously, the, I don't have any obligation if Chris Shingo committed some crime. I don't have any uh, obligation to report that. No thank you. Because under that circumstance, probably I cannot stay in this community. Probably this DBT community expel me. Under that circumstance, there's no reason to sacrifice me. It's the same thing, Mr. Speaker, I'm, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and more seriously. Because if this guy, the report to this crime, what will happen? Because this guy actually prioritized legal framework over the religious idea. They, if they stop to uh, report that, probably they will go to prison, but they can protect their religious belief. 
But if they start to report it, they actually betray their religious idea. Under that circumstance, while they can stay their religious community, they probably will be expelled. No thing. Under that circumstance, we can see the clear and self-sacrifice. No thing. That's why, Mr. Speaker, we have to report it. When the we can, uh, we, as long as we can see self-sacrifice, there's no obligation to be forced to report this kind of crime. Response coming from no the government side was that if the, this police does not follow that law, probably people misunderstand. We are only accountable for God. Response coming from me was then so what? People are accountable for myself before God. The people are accountable for myself. No, thank you. For example, if you belong to a corporation that probably is also a public entity, you also actually belong to this community, you are accountable for this community. If you betray your corporation, if you report that you are posted, no, thank you. Under that circumstance, you probably will be fired. Under that circumstance, no, thank you. Have, you actually self-sacrifice so you are, so, uh, yourself. Under that circumstances, Mr. Speaker, they actually took ah. so discriminatory stance. Because, because you believe religion, they are actually to betray corporation, betray this community, debating community, but they actually pick and choose this religious community. If you betray that you cannot betray this religious community, they actually make some kind of discrimination towards ah. them. No, thank you. Also, the response coming from closing government, a closing government was there. Public, uh, religious institution is public institution. That's why they had special obligation. What is a public institution? This is uh, my answer. Every kind of thing can be public institution. As I said before, corporation, debating society, and so forth. Can be public society, no public institution. According to their analysis, so this kind of public institution actually some kind of provide public benefit to two individuals. Like corporation, like debating society. It's a fundamental same thing. What's the difference? No exclusive reason that coming from your side. I'll give you a chance. We have opening government told that change of custom is going to change both the believers and the priests in the long term. So if the entire church has changed, why does your threat extension still stand? Response coming from me was this <laughs> changing, changing the law, the changing the this um a role model. Itself is an invite. This is an extension coming from my partner. They say that we have to encourage people to follow the law. We have to encourage the people to report the Syria at uh, this, the, uh, this the crime. But the, we say that it's actually clear the self sacrifice. As long as we can see, no thank you, sacrifice yourself. We should not enforce the people to report that. This is our condition. You are creating no itself is a fundamentally not the case. Yes. Uh, okay, so then do you think that religion has to be always, you know, in that manner, we not change any at all, at, at all, no change at all? So please listen to my point. We say, under that circumstance, religion is the same as corporation, religion is the same as other public institution. What is the difference? The religion is that these priests start to report that, that these priests have to be expelled from their community. It actually sacrifice themselves. The other community, so if belong to other community, probably you betray these community's members, you probably will be expelled. This is the same thing. As long as we can see the sacrifice with self, so we cannot justify that motion. So moving to the second point. So which side can decrease the number of armed um, prosecutions? At this point, an uh, argument coming from closing government was that so we can commit a large investigation, that's why so we can increase the number of prosecution. Response coming from my partner was that let's look at the natural reaction of priests in the status quo. In the status quo, in this um, confession box, the priest can say that so after confession, so you should go to the police, so you actually compensate for God and you should compensate for society. This priest can say that this is a natural reaction. According to government side explanation, this priest is a part of citizen. Natural reaction as a citizen that can say that you should go to police and you have to be compensated for poor society. Under that circumstance, according to their characterization, these people are so high religious people, they have high possibility to follow what priest had said. That's why, Mr. Speaker, in the status quo, so we can increase the possibility of prosecution because the priest has an incentive to persuade these criminals to go to go to go to the police. But in their side of the house, because police priest does not a priest actually report this crime. Priest doesn't follow their promise, and that's the second sense. 
there is less person to go to compare, which means there is less prosecution, they cannot protect their standard. We oppose. Thank you for and all the speeches are over.